All right, Anthony, thanks. Well, many of us complain about wrist pain, but few of us do anything about it. But there is help for carpal tunnel syndrome, and UConn is making some advances to treat it. Yeah, but not all discomfort can be blamed on carpal tunnel. And in fact, there are some myths associated with it. Dr. Craig Rodner is an assistant professor in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at the UConn Health Center. And he's joining us this morning to educate us. Now, Doctor, I know a lot of people say whenever they have pain in their hands, they say, oh, my carpal tunnel is acting up, but they may not know what the technical definition of it is, so can you Yeah, can you show that's true. That? So carpal tunnel syndrome by definition is really a nerve compression. There's uh, a couple different nerves which go, in fact three nerves which uh, provide sensation to the hand. The median nerve which basically goes to the front of the hand and the thumb, index finger, middle finger, and this part of the ring finger uh, is what's involved in carpal tunnel syndrome. And the median nerve goes through a inelastic channel at the wrist that's bordered by bones kind of on the back of the wrist, the carpal bones, and on the front of the wrist is a ligament which doesn't move much because it's a taut structure. And so if there's pressure which uh, increases beyond normal in that channel or tunnel, then the nerve will get squished. And what I tell patients is it goes from like a ZD diameter to a linguine. And when that happens, people can get numb and tingly burning sensation in the distribution of that nerve. So most wrist pain is not carpal tunnel, although it can be associated with this numbness and tingling phenomenon. So sometimes people are maybe just self-diagnosing and saying, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I have carpal tunnel, when they should really see somebody and figure out what it is. I mean, it could be something larger, right? Definitely, and if you have a trauma or something like that, you know, you wanna rule out broken bones or torn ligaments or that sort of thing. But definitely not all wrist pain is uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, for sure. Now you hear a lot of people who type a lot for their job saying that that's what causes it. Is that, in fact, true? And what other things would cause it? Well, typing can, but it's certainly not most of cases are typing. Really, any wrist-flexed or wrist-fixed activity where you're pushing that nerve, that ZD-like structure, that tube, into the ligament uh, it gets pushed or squished. So like in the 1800s, it was called stagecoach hands. So that was the profession back then, right. riding the, the you know, stagecoach, which did it, driving the stagecoach. And now anything which is uh, a position which puts your wrist at a flexed position, sleeping uh, certainly does it, driving a car, holding a phone, right. doing one's hair, um, typing, a lot of dentists, dental hygienists, hairdressers. So really anything that uh, involves prolonged wrist flexion. Right, now we were just talking in the break how a lot of pregnant women experience carpal tunnel. Why is that? Well, basically anything that increases kind of total body water or edema in uh, you know, the body, but based on the definition I was just talking about where there's too much pressure in a spot uh, than there should be, certainly too much water. We know that in pregnant women in your legs or yeah. you, know, you get puffy all over and one of the spots you know, would be the carpal tunnel. And the nice thing about that is the treatment is often the delivery of the baby. baby so right. that'll, <laughs> goes that'll away. Often but what is treatment for, for carpal tunnel otherwise? Yeah, so non-operative treatment is the hallmark for sure. And, and definitely surgery is rare, rare rarely indicated. A lot of people, you know, have had it because it's so darn common. But the truth is, um, wrist splinting would be a good first line treatment. If you notice, hey, I, you know, do typing or what have you, and right. I'm getting numb and tingly, waking up at night a bit, you know, just going to CVS or seeing your doctor who might have one in the, in the office to get a wrist splint, um, keeping the wrist out of a wrist flexed position would be a great first line treatment. And then monitoring your symptoms, you know, if it prolongs, uh, if it's prolonged and, and lasts over a couple weeks, you know, mentioning it to your primary care doctor and, and mm -hmm. kind of going about it that way. But uh, uh -huh. splint things of good first line treatment. Obviously, if it keeps getting worse and worse and, and more consistent, then is surgery an option? Definitely an option. Um, and uh, it's very successful. No surgery is 100% successful, right. but certainly uh, this is a 95 plus percent uh, success surgery. So, um, you know, for select patients, it's a great idea. All right. Dr. Rondo, thanks so much for clearing up a lot of those myths Pleasure. for us. Yeah, thank, thank you for being with us.